I've got a barbershop theory. Let's look at some different ways of singing a barbershop seventh chord. The first one is probably the most famous one. A series of thirds stacked on top of a root note. It's very ringable and works well at mid to high frequencies. Do. It doesn't work well at low frequencies because of the interval between bass and baritone making it sound muddy. The next one is very stable because we have a pure fifth between bass and baritone, stabilizing the rest of the chord structure. It's versatile and works well at all frequencies. This, being the third inversion of a dominant seventh chord, rings so well and has that distinct buzz between the root note and the flat seventh. Now we are moving away from the close harmony structures. This voicing is handy to use when singing at very low frequencies, because the harmony won't get muddy. This is because the large distance between the root note and the harmony above. This is a favorite of mine because of the particular way it rings. Building on top of a major third, adding a tritone above it makes it very tricky to tune, but it sounds like no other voicing. Another tricky yet beautiful chord structure to master. Placing the flat seventh in the bass makes it difficult to balance, but it's often used as a passing chord to build suspense or anticipation. It almost sounds magical. This last one is in fact my favorite. It goes by many names, sickle or icicle chord, and it used to be referred to as a Chinese because of the whole note interval between root and the flat seventh, alluding to the piano piece Chopsticks by Arthur Day Lully. Do.